they lack a lot of hygiene needs. They're not set up with the right clothing for the day. Monument Valley is like kind of viewed as a stepchild. People are really struggling here. I'm lucky to have a home. There are really no jobs in the area. They're not living with family or they're living in third world conditions. I know a family who lives out of their vehicle. The kids, they go from home to home. They're getting neglected. A lot of them shower when they get to school. The things that we take for granted every day, these people are like ecstatic about. We're similar to almost a third world country. It was March when we were talking about doing this project. I know the Christmas topic came up and some of what our mission is is really service and being connected to that. And you know, the problem with service sometimes is it's like all of this big grand trip somewhere into some foreign land and there's service opportunities. There's people who need our help like all around us. As we were talking, I remember that one of my friends, his wife, they work at a school down in, in Monument Valley. And every Christmas, you know, like a month before, they start asking for donations for blankets and just okay. anything you can spare. And that's when the light bulb went off. I'm like, okay, we got somewhere close. Well, today we've got all the alumni gathered up. We're headed down to Monument Valley. We're gonna bring in garden boxes. They really wanted to set up a gardening program for their school, so we're gonna build all the grow boxes, start their plants. And then we've got a large clothing donation. A lot of these kids, when they come to school, they're not set up with the right clothing for the day. A lot of them shower when they get to school, and so the school needs all those things. Show us where you want us to put the garden boxes. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's going to be the one yeah. first out, right? Yes, and if you'll do it on this end, all the way left end of the field. Yeah, so this little area right here. Just. Okay. Right here. process was I started with just looking online. I truthfully wasn't even 100% sure what a garden box was. So far we've gotten three boxes in. Uh, it's kind of the extent of our, our budget for right now. In the future we hope to put in more and to be able to donate more flower boxes, building supplies, school supplies, uh, and really kind of give these kids um, the things that they don't, the necessities that they don't have that we take for granted. We're kind of hoping to have the kids learn to plant vegetables, learn to keep them growing, learn to harvest them, and then have food to eat. The coolest part, though, was the kids that were really shy at first, and then once they kind of saw the other kids doing it, joined in, and you could really see them open up. And, you know, one girl was super excited. She ran away screaming about how she planted her first flower ever, and it was just really cool to share that experience with these kids and, and bond with them and, you know, all serve a common purpose together. There's a great need for support with our kids because a lot of them come to school and they lack a lot of hygiene needs. Some kids, you can tell, they just woke up, they just rushed to the school. You know, they just got out of bed and got on the bus. They're lacking their grades a year or two years. They fall behind so, so much. Kids still live in homes that, that don't have running water at all. Same thing with electricity. We just got our power a few years back. There's just no water, there's no electricity. And our family members have little homes and not enough room, so we, us kids, we have to push ourselves to get off the reservation again. Some families all crowd in. Maybe there's four families living in a tiny house, a two-bedroom house. And then some are living in, like, they're out of their vehicles. I know a family who lives out of their vehicle. The grandma got pushed out of their, her home She's sacrificing living out of her vehicle while her daughters and their kids are living in her house. Living on the reservation is the most toughest part of my life. <laughs> We're similar to almost a third world country. There's really no 
jobs or careers out here and you know the families who do work actually have to travel hours to leave the reservation to work and where the kids are just left with grandma and grandpa. I've been raised by parents that's been separated by alcoholism. It seems like all my siblings have done the same. We just got to the school, we uh, dropped off the donations that we collected. So far we brought in some food, uh, school supplies, clothing, basic toiletries, um, toothpaste, all that kind of stuff that every person should be able to have. In the future we hope to be able to continue bringing those things, whether we're going out and buying new stuff for them or just donations are great. Okay, so this is all full of toiletries. There's some like of the bags made. Yeah. The things that we take for granted every day. These people are like ecstatic about. From my understanding, a lot of these kids don't have access to that kind of stuff. So things like toothpaste and soap and deodorant will, I think, have a big impact on them. Does that sound good? We'll yeah. Do another. Yeah. We'll make use of this all of it because I think the towels will be needed a lot for um, the kids who shower and everything. Yeah. There's only like two different towels, so I'm like, yes, we can throw them out oh and use them. So you know, a lot of the kids out here don't have running water, so a lot of them end up showering here at this school. You know, before I came out here, I was talking to my mom about it and she was gonna have a yard sale and she's like, well, I have like two dozen towels or something, do they need those? And uh, it's like, yeah, they could probably use them. So it was just neat that, you know, I could, I brought something that they really needed. The Hogan is a spiritual kind of centering place for the Navajo tribe and a lot of these kids are experiencing a high degree of emotional distress at home through the living conditions they're dealing with. And so one of the therapists there recommended, hey, if, if we had a Hogan, we could really have these kids go to a place where we could help center them emotionally so that their education is more effective and valuable to them. So we're excited that our next phase of the project will be that. It's just cool to see it take form and going from a drawing board to actually doing it. It's, it's cool to be a part of that. We have piles of dirt, we're pouring water into the dirt and creating mud. We don't have a hose long enough, they only have one hose and they happen to have a bucket. So this is uh, oh, more work than I expected. That's, that's how it is, we just, we just work through it. We have to get all around the Hogan and so we're driving to the next town which is about 10 to 20 minutes to go buy a new hose. I can't tell you the positive response from the community with the Hogarth. Oh, that's been awesome. tremendous. Yeah, yeah it's been yeah. Really, I think it brings the, the you know our 21st century school right. together with the culture. And I'm really glad they put it out front too. Yeah. Like I, I think that's an awesome. Location. It's a good message, yeah. right? Just right. a visual yeah. message of yeah. what we're all about. So yeah, it's been awesome. We can't thank you enough for making that happen. For, for sure. Us. For so. sure. You got some pleasure. thank you letters. Oh, cool. yeah. A bunch of the kids wrote thank you letters to us for getting all the jackets and the Hogan built. So it's been really cool today. 
It was a whole day of putting mud against the cedar logs and just getting that hogan packed in. We probably only got maybe a third or a quarter of it done. There's still a lot more to go, but it was a big day and to have all of the alumni down, it was just a real big team effort and a good experience, I think, for everybody, and I know it was for me. Angel from the east said, when the first light came up, they said, that, oh, okay, I'll donate the juniper for the doorway. I'll help you with that somehow. We need to. And then from the south, they said, well, I'll, I'll donate the, the oak. This is what I have a lot of oak this way. Provide them, <laughs> donate to build a hook And then from the west, there's another angel. Said, I've got lots of hardwood. <laughs> I can provide her with, with like this. And then from the from the north, they said, Oh, I've got lots of pine. I can let, provide you with pine to build home, build hook on. So that the, the doorway has to be to the east. It's <laughs> Good <laughs> It's just a great feeling inside. I know that as long as I continue to do service work like this, it just helps me become a better person and it helps them learn how to grow up and be better people themselves. Just with the crew that we had today, not too many people, but what we accomplished today was really, was really empowering and inspired a lot of hope. I wanted to come down here to, well, to help people out, but that's almost a selfish thing because when I'm helping other people, that helps me feel better. I already feel kind of spiritually grounded here, just coming out here into these uh, mountains and seeing the canyons and doing just modest work. We've always tried to focus on service and giving back to people. A big part of recovery is actually getting out of yourself and recognizing that there's a lot of people out there in the world with a lot bigger problems even than we have day to day. 